Hello everyone, you are watching the channel Incredible Facts. At the start of December 2022, the US Air Force unveiled its latest efforts to modernize its nuclear fleet. This was the B-21 Raider Stealth Bomber. It was the latest introduction of the US military's efforts to refresh their nuclear deployment arsenal in the wake of China's massive military expansion in recent times. The Raiders' impressive unveiling ceremony showed a futuristic aircraft with a design to amaze any audience, just like the B-2 Spirit Bomber had done in the late 80s. The original stealth bomber set the standard with covert attacks and was designed with the Cold War in mind. Although the need for such an aircraft greatly reduced in the early 90s after the Cold War ended, a new threat has seen a need for an upgrade and this is where the B-21 Raider comes in. In this video, we're going to look at the original stealth bomber and compare it with the Northrop Grumman's latest offering. Before we get started, if you do enjoy this video and would like to see more just like it, remember to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get more sent straight to your notifications. Although the B-2 Spirit wasn't the first stealth bomber, it is the first to have the iconic stealth look that lends itself more to a sci-fi movie than a present Air Force. The first stealth bomber was the Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk, which was first introduced into service in 1983. The B-2 Spirit was introduced 14 years later in 1997, but the plans for such a revolutionary aircraft were in the works for decades. The Spirit was inspired by designs of revolutionary engineer Jack Northrup. His flying wing design was first seen in 1949, but was not adopted by the Air Force until much later. It was only until the mid-70s that the aim of stealth missions, where aircraft could go relatively undetected by radar, were seen as the next step in modern warfare. This started a race with U.S. engineers, and Northrop's design gained favor with the U.S. government and they were awarded the primary contract. After redesigns due to a preference for low-altitude attacks, the B-2 Spirit made its first flight in 1989, and at that point, an estimated $23 billion has been spent on the project. The B-2 is a versatile bomber capable of conventional and nuclear munitions. The bomber represented a major milestone in modernizing the U.S. bomber fleet and upgrading their firepower allowing global attacks to areas thought previously impenetrable. The unprecedented mix of low observable technologies with high aerodynamic efficiency and ability to carry a large payload gave the bomber significant advantages over existing aircraft at the time. Its low observability gives greater freedom of action at high altitudes than other planes, and this increased its range and a viewpoint for the plane's sensors. To help deliver these results, the B-2 has four general electric turbofans. This carries two pilots on missions that can stretch to 6,900 miles, 11,112 kilometers, without refueling, and 11,500 miles, 18,520 kilometers, with a fuel stop, which is particularly impressive considering the aircraft has a maximum takeoff weight of 336,500 pounds. 152 tons, with a wingspan of 172 feet, 52 meters. Other key measurements of the bomber are that it has a length of 69 feet, 21 meters, but a height of only 17 feet, 5.1 meters, which contributes to its sleek design. It can stay in combat up to 50,000 feet, 15,200 meters, and travel at a high subsonic speed of 630 miles per hour. 1,014 kilometers per hour. In terms of operation, Whiteman Air Force Base is the only base that the B-2 operates out from. The first ever incarnation of the aircraft, Spirit of Missouri, was delivered there in December 1993. The Kosovo War would prove to be the first test for the B-2's combat effectiveness in Operation Allied Force, and it passed this test by destroying 33% of all Serbian targets. This was done by flying non-stop to Kosovo, then Missouri, and back over the course of eight weeks. According to reports, it was the spirit that bombed the Chinese embassy in Sarajevo. The plane also contributed to Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. It flew from Whiteman to Afghanistan and back in one of its longest missions. 
the Spirit was asked to complete its first combat deployment during Operation Iraqi Freedom. It flew 22 sorties from a forward operating location and also 27 sorties from Whiteman Air Force Base. As part of the same operation, it also released more than 1.5 million pounds of munitions. In October 2001, a B-2 set a record where it flew for 44 hours to drop the first bombs in Afghanistan after the attacks of September 11. The B-21 Raider has been introduced to replace the Spirit once the fleet is due to be decommissioned in 2032. Just like the B-2, the Raider has its heritage firmly set well into the past. Its name is to honor those who took part in what was thought to be an impossible mission in 1942. Eighty volunteers led by Lt. Col. Jimmy Doolittle, dubbed the Doolittle Raiders, launched 16 B-25s from the deck of the USS Hornet, even though the plane hadn't been designed to take off from that kind of vessel. The raid proved to be an important milestone in future improvements of U.S. military innovation. Because of this, the company behind the new raider Northrop Grumman decided to name its B-21 after these heroes. In comparison to the B-2, it's been a relatively short turnaround from contract award to debut for the B-21 only seven years. As expected, the project has not been cheap. Reports have suggested that the project will cost $203 billion over 30 years, with each unit costing almost $700 million. It's hoped that around 100 units will be produced overall, which was the original aspiration for the B-2, until cuts meant that only 21 were made. The Raider uses two Pratt & Whitney F-135 afterburning turbofan engines as seen in the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II jet. These will lift a max takeoff weight of 170 tons, a significant increase on the 336,500 pound 152 tons seen on the B-2. Northrop have also managed to shave some height off the aircraft in comparison to the B-2 as it stands at 16.4 feet. 4.9 meters in comparison to 17 feet, 5.1 meters. The wingspan is 164 feet, 50 meters, which is 8 feet, 2 meters, shorter than the previous model. It's also not as long at 65 feet, 20 meters, which is 4 feet, 1 meters, shorter than the B-2. The B-21 will still feature two pilots, just as the B-2 did. It will also have a similar top speed at 621 miles per hour, 1,000 kilometers per hour. But although the new aircraft might appear to be a downgrade in terms of its size, it's all about what's inside that counts when it comes to modern warfare. The engineers have learned their lesson from observing decades worth of B-2 movements and have now made a technological leap to make this stealth bomber the stealthiest plane in the sky. The design of exterior is also crucial to minimize detection. The B-21's jet inlets are more flush with the body of the plane to help with this, and as well as the less pronounced nose. Another significant improvement that is thought to have been made on the B-21 is with its ram coating, which is the material that absorbs radar waves to minimize detection. The B-2 has received massive upgrades on this since it was introduced, but this has been an expensive and laborious process. It's not been disclosed, but it's thought that the B-21's ram coating will be much improved as standard. But one of the most significant changes is the ability to future-proof the aircraft. In terms of engineering, we haven't made huge leaps in design over the past 30 years in the same way that we have made massive technological leaps when it comes to software and hardware. The B-2's original hardware from the 80s is probably found in most people's pockets now. So that's why on the B-21, the hardware and software have been detached, meaning that the Raider has been primed to launch weaponry that hasn't even been designed yet. This will mean no need to completely gut out the bomber's computer when a new advancement comes along. A simple upgrade can instead be made. So, the B-21 has definitely built upon the success of the B-2, not necessarily in the way you might expect. On the face of it, it could be seen as the B-2's little brother, but in fact, the B-21 is a significant step when it comes to 100% stealth in the middle of warfare. What are your thoughts on the B-21 Raider? 
let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get our latest videos sent straight to your notifications.